and welcome to our 42 Courses Speaker event. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have the bandwidth, do please put your camera on because it's lovely to see people uh, as they join us. We'll let you in the waiting room as you join. And thank you very much. We're going to be recording this event just to let everybody know. And today, thank you, Marissa. <laughs> today, I'm so pleased to have with me Emily Hinks. Emily is the founder of Mischief Makers. She's based in Amsterdam. She's somebody that I know really just from doing our creative effectiveness course with 42 courses. But it's so funny in these courses that we do, we see people's videos within our courses. You sort of feel like you know them. So it's absolutely lovely to have Emily join us at today's event. And I was just saying to her before we all joined on the call that I just read this super article that I would love for you to all go away and read in campaign uh, from Josh Bulmore, who says we need to embrace our cringe. And uh, Emily and I both said that was absolutely how how we like to go about creativity. You have to be really true to yourself. And we're not really into being cool. So, uh, Emily. Let me hand over to you first, and just for everybody who's joined us today, just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit how you got to where you are today and uh, where you're at at the moment. Over to you, Emily. I will do. Thank you so much, Louise, for that introduction. And yeah, it's a real pleasure to be here. I've been a big fan of 42 courses for a long time. So uh, yeah, it's an honor to be in some of the courses and to uh, yeah be doing this together. Um, as Louise mentioned, I'm uh, English, but I live in Amsterdam. Uh, still can't speak very much Dutch. All I can say is halas pindakas, which means um, uh, oh well, peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> so very so important. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so based here in Amsterdam, and I'm the founder of Mischief Makers. We're a future of work consultancy. We mainly focus on how organizations bring people together uh, to work and learn together. So this can look like us helping uh, companies um, upskill to the future of work. So really how we're keeping that human connection and the power of collaboration alive when it's virtual or when it's hybrid. Um, upskilling and facilitation skills, which is kind of our core competency with the mischief, or it looks like them hiring us to facilitate big gigs for them. So whether that's offsites or projects uh, that they're leading with their partners or uh, leadership programs, they bring us in for that heavy hitting uh, complex events. Um, and next to this, I also am the founder of Roots In, which is our nonprofit. And that's all about empowering young talent from underprivileged backgrounds to break into the creative industry. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> Fantastic. So interesting. And uh, again, we were just quickly saying before we joined the call, people talk about the future of work, but of course we're in it. And some people are always oh, a bit yawn to be still talking about how how work is going at the moment. But that's the fact we're in it. It's progressing. We go step one foot, step forward, one step back. But your company is very much involved with how to make the different ways of working, basically, work. Uh, and you must have been learning yourselves during this period. Um, and I saw now in LinkedIn, you were involved in recently in one particular project with a very large number of people, so about 200 people. I mean, that must have been pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was a that was a really good one. That was an event that we collaborated with Miro in around. Um, it was an event about the future of work, and it was a hybrid event. So we were really kind of putting our money where our mouth is in, um, yeah, making it. Uh, while we were talking about hybrid and how to collaborate hybrid hybridly, making sure that we did that in a hybrid setting, um, and it is very complex to collaborate with 200 people and make sure that it's human and make sure that it's engaging but that's really um yeah our expertise and it is possible and that's what we wanted to prove to the participants uh because we were kind of looking together at what the future of work holds um, and embracing the fact to your point louise that we're on the forefront of it all now like our generation of professionals we're creating the best practices we're setting the precedent for 
what how the new world of work works uh and that's you know it's it's we're really lucky and privileged to be in this position that we can let go of some of the things that didn't work in the old uh world of work um and start to kind of let go of habits and systems that didn't serve and create new ones that do serve that are inclusive that are engaging so a lot of the work that we do is help um teams and organizations do things like meeting culture transformation. So how are we making sure that, okay, our meetings are productive and efficient, but also they're not making people wanna like bang their head against the wall. And it's not only the same person speaking or being heard. Um, and there's a bit of this romanticized view. We look back at the past and say like, oh, but meetings, we just knew how to do them and they all worked really well. But did they? Like, were they really always efficient? Were people enjoying the meetings that they were going to and being like, that's time well spent? Uh, so yeah, it's been great. There are many positives to come from this flip that people are really embracing the opportunity to 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 work better together and to make workplaces more human. Um, and to your point as well that you mentioned that we were kind of learning this, uh, we were also going through this switch ourselves at the front. I think what was really uh, was lucky for us is that um, I used to work with Hyper Island, uh, and we'd I've been working on designing a lot of um, virtual courses for them. So we ran like a pioneering program around like innovation that was fully a fully virtual course in like 2018 or 17, um, and that meant that we had a lot of experience at Mischief Makers in wanting to make sure that our quality of making sessions be engaging and enjoyable and interactive translated to online. So we worked on a lot of that previously. So when the switch came that everybody was suddenly thrown online and we're really thinking, how do we do this? We um, were in the position to be able to feed that forward to our clients and to our network and say, hey, here's how we've been doing it and, and it'll help them come along. So we've been quite on the forefront. We also launched our hybrid course in 2020 as soon as the lockdown started to open. So again, with hybrid, we've had a lot of time to play with it uh, and learn how to do it. And of course, you know, we've been doing this for over two years now, all of us meeting online. Some people, I mean, we, I think a lot of us working in offices just presume everybody's doing this, but of course they're not. You know, people are going to work in the pretty standard way. And we've all discovered ways that work for us. But what interests me at the moment is that on the one hand it seemed like beforehand we were saying oh offices they're not great for creativity you know they're not the best place because I the, I remember the video from yourself just saying things like you all sit around a table and you've got a physical barrier in front of you um and now everybody's that's the argument why we've got to get back or we've got to have the, oh, the flipping water. If anyone says the water cooler effect one more time, <laughs> I think I'm going to scream. But, yeah, um, you know, and, and these are the arguments. Now, I will say this argument does tend to come from a certain type of person. We all know who they are. Um, but what can we what can we do to make our meetings online you know, more conducive to sharing creative thought and and being inspiring mm, really good question uh and it's true the whole water cooler we're missing the water cooler I don't know how many people were gathered around a water cooler in the, <laughs> the whole place, but, it seems yeah. the only place any work was ever done exactly <laughs> uh, no but I think there is something to be said for those micro micro social interactions that were happening in the office and now what can tend to happen if people if organizations or teams or managers aren't intentional about the way that their um remote or decentralized teams are spending time together and this is some of the work we do around meeting culture transformation then it they can come fall into the trap of like us just having a meeting when we need to get that piece of work done and they're the only time we see each other in person and so you lose some of that like social glue or lubricant let's say um and actually that's really important for um uh, building trust and connection between people. When we talk about like cultivating collaborative creativity, which is the best type of creativity, I would argue for a workplace because different perspectives uh, lead to stronger results. Um, so um, when we're talking about cultivating that environment virtually for collaborative creativity, 
Um, you need the people that are working together on um, creating together or sharing ideas with one another to have a foundation of connection. Um, there's studies that show, uh, there's a great study, there's a great TED talk around it of uh, putting two strangers into a room and the levels of cortisol and stress that they're feeling if they don't know one another are relatively high. And if they play five minutes of, I think they did like egg at the the guitar game, uh, the, <laughs> I can't remember which one it is, the, the, the PlayStation or whatever. Uh, if they play the, uh, a game together for five minutes, then their brain- Guitar reg- Hero, I think we're guitar talking hero. about. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was like, egg guitar, that's not it. <laughs> I was very good at that in my day. Anyway, go oh. on. <laughs> Love it. Um, yes, Guitar Hero. So uh, they play together for five minutes and then- um, they already register each other as a friend or someone that they know. Their cortisol is lower. They feel, um, they it basically physiologically and mentally, they feel more at ease with this person. Um, and also playing together, playing games together with people, it lowers our barrier to looking, we, we lose some of our inhibitions around um, looking silly. Because if we look silly and we fail in a game together, we've got that practice with that other person. So when we come together to work and share ideas, we've got a lived experience of not being judged by that person. Um, so it's really important to have, st- to build these connections and um, relationships with people before you ask them to create together. Um, because if they, if they are their inhibitions are holding them back, they'll be self-censoring and not sharing ideas. Um, so just even, even in a standard meeting, we uh, talk about designing kind of meetings as seeing them as a journey and there's a launch explore and land part to that journey. And the launch part is really having everybody arrive and feel comfortable. If you have people's voice once in the room at the start, they're much more likely to bring it in later. So that launch part is about getting people to feel relaxed, open up, feel comfortable, break the ice. Um, The explore part is getting to grips with whatever you're doing together. So coming up with ideas and the land is really, what do we do? How can we do that? They continue this going forward. Um, So even if you've got half an hour meeting, just spending five minutes or longer at the start, doing a bit of that launch and getting people to feel comfortable, doing a check-in, ideally like doing some type of exercise, we call them hot starts. Um, then it's going to pay off. Like if you spend that time up front, you'll really feel the quality of it when you do then come to the activity of creating together. And that's really lovely to hear you talking about research behind the power of play. We all know these things instinctively, but then when we come to the business environment, as it is with, say, you know, the, the brand research from Byron Sharp, we really... Once we're in business, we really feel like we need to have that behind us to give mm-hmm. sort of validation, even though instinctively we know we know it from doing yeah. it. But if you're trying to sell the idea to somebody else, you really need that, don't you, behind you to feel confident of, of what you're claiming. Yeah. And I would say, indeed, like when I, when working with agencies or like that are, are naturally very creative places, but that are now online, I think anybody here that is coming to a creative session with someone within their teams and it's virtual, look for some low hanging fruit, like just just use one meeting where you try and use a hot start or where you use a Miro board with like a creative activity instead of just saying, let's brainstorm some ideas. Mm -hmm. And then like it it will make a difference. It's, uh, uh, and then afterwards, you've got a bit of, that's a lived experience by the people there. You've got a use case for it. And then just say, hey, can you give me an hour next time to do this with, just find those quick wins where you can get people to experience the difference of hosting those meetings a little bit differently and using tools like Miro. Um, but also like we've got tools, we can still, uh, we can play a game if you want already. Should we play a game? Absolutely. Okay, but for this, if people are able to, you might need to turn, be comfy with turning your uh, camera on momentarily, if you're cool with that. But um, just an example of what I want to show is like, there's the tools like Miro, where you have the virtual post-its and so on, but you're also still all in a physical space. And sometimes computers can get us a bit like, oh, you know, we're locked into this space. So helping people remember that there's a tactile world around them uh, can help open up. And this is an energizer that I would play either at the start or midway through a creative meeting uh, that was virtual, for example. Great, let's go. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay, so can you put random words into chat? So it could be sun, uh, um, peanut butter, anything. Yeah, great. Bubble gum, oh. just random words, cats, rain, great. Notebook. Nice, so hey. practical, lovely. Yeah, coffee. Okay, and now, Louise, can I ask you to pick three words out of the ones that have come in here? Great. We'll have flowers from Marissa. Mm -hmm. uh, we have coffee from Maria. Mm -hmm. And, oh, Argentina, unusual. We'll have Argentina from Giles. <laughs> okay, perfect. We've got flowers, coffee, and Argentina. So now we've each got a minute to draw on a post-it or a piece of paper in front of you, flowers, <laughs> coffee, Argentina. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so off you go, flowers, coffee, Argentina. Argentina, my word. I know, Argentina <laughs> is a tricky one, but hey, our creative minds can go there. All right, you've got another 30 seconds-ish. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to judge any of you on your drawing. I can exactly. tell you because mine is absolutely appalling. <laughs> no pressure on drawing style. Like uh, The weird, weirder and wilder, the better. Stick men are all welcome. <laughs> okay, now if you're ready, what I would love to invite you to do is to just hold these up oh, no. to the camera. Let's see what you got. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful great yeah nice see the different ways that people have got them marissa i know you said it would be hard for you to talk but i would love to hear what you've got there <laughs> if you can whisper it for a second <laughs> yeah <laughs> are they really known for steak <laughs> you bought steak yes okay show us again oh i'm nice <laughs> sort of yeah <laughs> I like it. I like where your brain went there. Huh. And Chris, hey, I didn't realize that it was you. Nice to see you. Okay, show me what you got, Chris. Let's see. Oh, lovely, lovely. It's building up. I like that. Flat. Is that a tank, Chris? A tank? Uh, yeah. Oh, no, I'm mute. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, I just, yeah, wake up in Cape Town. It's amazing here. Um, sorry for being late. Uh, I was watching a documentary on Argentina and the Falklands War, so so a tank came to mind. <laughs> there you go. See where different people's mi minds go. Interesting. Argentina seems to be the thing that's causing you know the most creativity. Who would have thought? Who was it? Who's it? it was Giles who said Argentina. So maybe Giles would show us his uh, sheet of drawing. You're asking where's the Argentina in that? <laughs> <laughs> judgment <laughs> so so actually it's, it, I, i'm sorry about this this is a football reference if i did that okay uh, leeds united had an argentinian manager called marcelo bielsa who used to sit on a bucket uh, by the side of his of the pitch so that's the bucket that's his bucket uh, and some flowers and, and radiance of creative, coffee a dual purpose uh, drawing that's a, a creative cryptic. person no Fantastic. perfectly yeah Fantastic. Well, we haven't had, we just haven't had Maria. We can't leave Maria out. Do join us, Maria, and show us your drawing. Is that mountains, mountains. in uh, Argentina? I want that cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm hoping there are some mountains in Argentina. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so if there are, there should be. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And Emily, did you, did you show us how you, how you created I when I just thought of sun, I yes, was like, oh, yes. oh, to be in Argentina right now. And then I had a flower coffee cup. <laughs> Lovely. I'll, I'll fess up because I'm last up. You won't be able to read my writing backwards, but it actually says, don't cry for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. See that already yeah. just like let like a, a minute the different angles that we already came in through with just those little prompts. And of course, it maybe has nothing to do with the session that you've just been having in creativity but it just unlocks some of that like um lateral thinking yeah. people uh yeah woken the, the force of the time as well and I'm just picking my notebook up here because I scribbled before we joined 
um, a quote from John Cleese, most mm. creativity has, most creatives have a childlike faculty, it might be facility, I can't read my writing, a faculty for a play. So I think we all agree the, the power of play to bring forward our creative juices. Now, the other thing I'd like to talk to you about is I feel like recently I've read lots of articles that are talking about sort of almost like a dearth of creativity or that creativity is in a crisis or if we're talking specifically then about advertising that mm. maybe it doesn't have the creative effectiveness to mm. things sort of knitting together that it had in the past mm. I wonder if you could sort of talk about that for a little bit yeah I think that there's something to be said again I it always comes back to me about like human relationships and connection and I think that the echo effect of there being less of that connection time um, is potentially felt within um, what's happening within agency, the agency landscape right now. I mean, I know there have been other things at play previously as well, but um, it takes love and attention, intentionality to create the environment for creativity. If we think about offices, like agencies, how um, different they were to traditional workplaces, you know, in the heyday of advertising, you know, where everything like, um, and of course, culture goes beyond having a cool pool table and, uh, you know, funky chairs, but it does something like your environment and how you spend the, the, the way you're spending your time and your connection with people uh, does something. And actually, John Cleese, I'm struggling to remember the exact um the exact phrasing of the quote but there's another quote when it comes to hybrid or remote working that we've used recently that um talks about how the ideas for um creative ideas they grow in spending time with one another and then they're kind of like built when he was then spending time on his own and that that tension and relationship between individual kind of time on my own to think and be creative is all well and good but it has to be fueled and fed by spending time with creative others um, yeah, and it's just easy in any work day to just be bogged down in the normal meetings and with the work that you've got in front of you. Um, so using tools like Discord, or there is another one that came up recently, I can't remember the name that looks like it's going to be the future. It's basically like a virtual office space and you can see where people are moving around. And if you get close, then you're, um, you can chat together. Um, the spaces like that where you can still work independently, but you're with others, even virtually, um, can already like make a big difference to fueling that creativity. Because I think we can all agree uh, in the creative world that your creativity does need fueling and it needs exercising. And if we're feeling a bit disparate, like a remote, literally physically remote and removed from others, um, yeah, you feel the impact of it. And, and I was just coming back to this article that I mentioned at the start of our conversation about being more cringe. Um, <laughs> it really interested me because I feel like, you know, over the last two and a half years, and I've argued this with a lot of people, is that we have become sort of more, more authentic, more sort of true to ourselves, and that the barriers have come down as we've all connected with each other in our own homes you know some people only place they can zoom from is their bedroom you're seeing very personal spaces and yet this argument was saying that the ad agencies you know are trying are still trying to be too cool so that kind of surprised me because as I say I, I feel authenticity we have become sort of more real and we're not putting up with any of the silly fakey nonsense anymore um so you know why do you think that it hasn't sort of trickled down you know into into ad land or maybe it has maybe maybe his premise is wrong no I think that that's a really interesting insight and actually yeah I think it's true that now that 
the relationship between managers and their people, for example, has really shifted in through Corona because people were dealing with, you know, the realities of yeah, homeschooling or struggling with different uh, mental health or isolation or loneliness. And that didn't used to be something that managers were kind of responsible for being involved in. And that barrier was really removed when we went through COVID. So that the relationship dynamic has definitely shifted. And I would argue that it it's a struggle to take it back to being removed from uh, caring about the individual well-being on that level. Um, so there's been a, a lot more room for us to be real, full, multifaceted humans. And that's been a positive shift. Um, so there is there's definitely the shift um, into being able to be a full human in the workplace. And where we used to hear a lot of tension around that was in more co- kind of corporate work environments was the kind of like I put on my work self and don't show my human self. And that's definitely shifted. And we're seeing corporate environments embrace that. So, I mean, we were working with the UAE government and I did not expect them to play as much as they did or get as creative and silly we have a quote in mischief that or mantra seriously awesome results don't always require serious behavior and that actually if you're helping people loosen up and engage and enjoy something the quality of the work increases so we try and champion that but we often ease people in so the uae government for example we started with some lighter energizers and games and creative exercises but by the end they were playing like buzzy bee like around the room and they were asking for it which was was wild and we see that with our corporate clients but in the agency landscape i think what's interesting is the corporate space was maybe more about being professional and formal um uh whereas in agencies i guess it's it's a little bit kind of more uh subliminal the the way of like of being cool and being like socially accepted versus like it's not i'm putting on my agreed social etiquette of being formal in a in a corporate workplace it's that i'm trying not to show that i'm anything but naturally cool i'm not putting something on here so maybe it's harder to let go a bit of that um guys And again, I would say that there's a lot to do with like role modeling as well. Like we do a lot of trainings in agencies around creative confidence, around gravitas training, which is a big one about people shifting up different roles within an agency and how to walk into a room with clients and different stakeholders and feel confident and authentic. Um, And there it's really kind of a lot of the session is talking to people about that shared want to be more authentic and to let go of a bit of the mask and the that it's okay and that they can role role model that to one another and that starts to breed um more of kind of letting go and being willing to willing to look uh silly um yeah that's a, a really smart observation and it may well be that it's it's an industry issue that's very interesting so do everybody who's joined us thank you so much and do put your questions Uh, for Emily in the chat and I'll bring you in to put your question Uh, just before we go to the questions maybe I can just sort of really sort of move back to the beginning and you know we all talk about creativity so easily and it just drops into our our conversation Um, but then sometimes when we're in front of somebody else and we're talking about the power of creativity we need to go back to what our really kind of core understanding is of creativity. Do you mind maybe trying to put that into words for us? I think it's something that even though we're all trying to be creative, sometimes we do struggle to get beyond the very stiff description of it, of just being, say, you know, in the arts or being writing poetry. Or That's definitely not what we're talking about when we're talking about in business. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have to borrow from because I just think he puts it so for me, the best description of creativity is from Sir Ken Robinson. Um, and it's really he describes creativity as applied imagination. Um, so it's the idea that yeah, creativity isn't something that is um reserved for the creative elite. So like uh yeah, poetry, arts, yeah, that it's really something that lives within every person and if you have the ability to imagine you have the ability to be able to be creative and that that's a muscle that can be grown and worked on uh through uh the utilizing tools or techniques to help you just reconnect with creativity that i mean so Ken robinson talks a lot about the creativity within schools and how it's kind of squished out of us a bit when we as we grow up um so yeah i really think that creativity is just 
an innate ability that we all have to navigate and look at the world differently, to see problems or pain points or opportunities and imagine around them um, to come up with yeah, ideas. That's great, Emily. Um, Chris has made an interesting comment in our chat, and maybe I'll bring you in, Chris, to um, join us. Your comment uh, there about trust uh, and creativity and, and from Mark in our, our in area of body language, maybe you'd just chat with uh, Emily about that. Yeah, yeah. Ho hopefully my internet remains stable. I saw like a little notification. So apologies in advance if it, if it messes up a second. But yeah, I was chatting to this guy. I don't know, have you met Mark Bowden, Emily? I haven't. He's, he's awesome. I'll make a plan. Um, anyway, he's this uh, sort of body language specialist. Um, and uh, in based, he's an English chap based in Canada. I went over to Canada and, and got to meet up with him. And he was saying <clears throat> before the pandemic, it was really interesting. He His job was, yeah, I guess kind of like you, he has consulting, does a lot of consulting. And so he would have to travel a lot and meet people and, you know, getting them to be confident that, he was the right person was sometimes a challenge if they didn't you know some people just wouldn't hire you unless they'd met you in person and he just said all that's just totally been blown out the water like now it's totally normal to meet someone on a call like this and then go great okay yeah, you seem like a normal sensible person fantastic I'll I'll trust you and let's go with it um and I, I think there must be such an interesting link between that trust and creativity because I'm looking back at my advertising days the 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 best times where the best work came out were often when there was also the highest trust um yeah and i mean it i think it kind of all of it links into a bit of everything like it, it's sort of you know you get the high trust because you know each other really well but you've also probably been working with each other for a little while like so there's all these different things that come in to build up to mm -hmm. to be able to get into a space where you can be super creative and you, you feel comfortable to to be that uh, to to be that person but yeah I don't know I, yeah. I, I have a million questions for you I'm so sorry <laughs> for joining me um but yeah I mean I, I, yeah. I yeah yeah I think that that's a really really great insight and and so true and speaks to as well why there's maybe a bit of this deficit of creativity right now because there's not been as much space and time for that trust to build up in the way right. that it used to just be we kind of took it for granted that it because maybe we are going for lunches and dinners and yeah. you know after work drinks and stuff together that where some of that can form um and we talk a lot like mischief we focus on facilitation and the facilitator's role to create a container or create spaces where there is I mean, we used to say psychological safety, but that's been combated a bit more with like psychological bravery. So spaces where people can feel brave to like shoot the idea out there and and speak up. Um, and that it's it's like absolutely crucial to create workspaces and teams where there is a lot of psychological safety or there's the platform to be psychologically brave uh, in that space. Um, and there's different things you can do to uh, create it, but again it's like about investing time and energy into yeah. those activities and it's it's a precursor to them so we can't just be like people aren't coming up with great ideas what do we need to do okay we'll just push them to come up with more ideas or try more creative exercises and actually it's a step before it's creating the environment where people can uh, uh get into that mindset and headspace uh together. I guess you you kind of need to probably be be going in each quarter and and doing stuff rather than like hey come in let's do this one thing for a half a day or half an hour and then like bye <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and we've talked about like doing culture evolutions so now like the culture used to live in the office now it's we're decentralized so where does that culture and those connections and uh trust building where does it live mm -hmm. And yes, um, off-sites, I would argue, are like an absolutely crucial part of that. Or on-sites. Some, co some companies are really, people are rarely in the office, but one day uh, a month or two days a month, we are all in the office together or we're off-site somewhere. Um, they're a big part, but also like the um like the weekly team moment in between and the team retreats rather than the full company retreat and like the leadership, like, there needs to be those human spaces and just building in that rhythm uh yeah it's so transformational what, what what's been the the most helpful exercise that you know has there been any exercises that you ran pre-covid and then like you're running now and you're like oh wow this 
this was like okay before and now it's working really well has that happened with anything you've done Ooh, that's a really good question um I don't know about any that like like uh, work way better online than they do did in person but I would say that I'm yet to find one that doesn't work online that did in person um as long as you approach it with creativity um there's really so much you can do uh I I think presentation training there is ones that you can do that is really suited for virtual because people are making presentations virtually but if you want someone to really bring, build up that prowess and also being able to do it in person then then it's good to have a bit of that in person but I, yeah it's it's amazing and really rewarding to see like it's so possible to still get that like vibe and energy and commitment from everybody online uh still and yeah in terms of creative spirit flowing that would be a question from the chat there's one i can share the link to it called the party exercise which is really great for like divergent and convergent thinking like getting in that mindset that's epic i mean i, mean, I, I think that was when i first met you that was the the, the best thing ever was uh we, we did the righty drawery yes exercise. yeah Still one of my favorite games to play we've got it online i'll share it with you okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you'd, maybe you'd just tell us what what was involved in that Emily yeah so here yeah, I'm putting the party exercise in the chat here but um uh righty jewelry it's basically um they call it broken telephone also in some places so I would write down a, a short story or like a small premise like Chris came to Amsterdam and fell in the canal <laughs> like so that could be a story and then I would pass it on to the person next to me and they would read that put it to the back and they would draw what they've just read and then the next person receives just the drawing and then writes it on the next uh, 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 piece of paper and it continues and then you unfold the story and see like uh, how it's been interpreted or misinterpreted for a much to comical effect. <laughs> I love that you've brought that up, Chris. That's an annual Christmas game that we put consequences, we call it, where you put oh, yeah. the man, so he oh, met okay. she and he said to her. And, and as you say, any of those sort of group things are super for bringing down walls between people. And also it's reminding me, Chris, in the creative effectiveness course, I don't know if any of you will remember, but there's an image which is super. It's a big red button and uh it says here something like press press here for creativity on demand which really is the essence of it all it is so hard isn't it to uh per perform in a in a creative way yeah, yeah. there's so much you've I got to get you there sorry chris i love that from uh, maria the the comment is lovely D during lockdown so just started having uh virtual morning coffees often just chit chat I think it is that chit chat, isn't it, that that sort of helps so much. It's it's the stuff that's not written down in the rule books that's often more important than the stuff that's written down. Uh, mm. in, in, you must do this. It's the unspoken things. Um, they I are, think they're it's, taken for granted as well. Hundred percent. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's lovely. We'll have to do this uh, in person next time. Uh, <laughs> great, great chat um be sort of a surprise you come on the call and you get a plane ticket to bali or something and we, we can all make a meet up there <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'll just uh, bring boring. maybe i'll just bring uh maria in i don't know if you have bandwidth there maria to turn on your video but just to um maybe join us and tell us about the technique uh, that that you've used or things that you think have made it easier to connect yeah, so it has actually been this morning coffee session. They are like voluntary, so it's a random number of people. Whoever has the time, they join in even for a couple of minutes and then they go. And it's like a half an hour dedicated each morning, this space where we meet on the teams. Teams and we are there all just in our, you know, morning, like uh, hair is not done, nothing. We are just like saying hello and chit-chatting. And the thing I like things. about that, Maria, is in a way the lack of sophistication of it is, is so how simple is that? Just getting yeah. together for a coffee. Yeah. It doesn't need anything 
difficult. Like sometimes we've been having these little games that we play to try to get to know each other better, like with the coffee cups guessing. Like it's telling something about the personality of the other one, like what kind of favorite coffee cup they have or what kind of painting they have on the wall, what's their favorite painting. And then we are always guessing like this one looks like it belongs to that person and all that. So it's just been like a fun way to getting to know each other. And I feel like we've been getting much closer during this lockdown. Like we didn't hang out this much together at the office because everybody was just busy doing their thing. Mm -hmm. We didn't used to take the time out to just be together there. That's lovely. That's a very positive note from uh, Maria. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us and sharing that. And maybe just before we wrap up then, Emily, I, I don't know, are you able to um, maybe come up with sort of three top tips for encouraging uh, connectivity or I hate to put you on the spot, but maybe maybe you could just share something like that that we could practically take away. Yeah, um, I think definitely treating um, or being intentional about making spaces either within your existing meetings or creating uh, other spaces where you can like just show be together as humans. Um, just like Maria was just talking about. Um, so to build those social bonds and create a more of a sense of trust and connection with one another. Um, I would say that um, as one. Second, I would, yeah, just be bold and creative about to that silliness, that cringeness mm -hmm. of like actually like being playful together and playing games or energizers or using a creative technique um, will really like uh, make a difference to um, your mindset. Uh, and how your kind of brain gets whirling. Uh, so using energizers, there's loads on Facilipedia. I just shared a link to one of the exercises we do uh, in the chat. Uh, Facilipedia is our bank for facilitators, uh, resource bank. Um, and then last but not least, what would I say? Yeah, I think the point that uh, Chris and I were just mentioning as well is like challenging more on an organizational level to look at kind of what is the rhythm of um, uh, uh, building a decentralized work culture. Um, so from offsites and everything in between, just really starting to influence. Yeah. How do we how do we build that psychological safety um, in order to create the environment for us to then be able to get creative together? Well, thank you so much for joining us, Emily. It's been really great to pick your brain on this really interesting subject. And it's been a joy for me to actually be able to speak with you. As I said, I only knew you from the recordings in the course. So it's really lovely to talk and connect with you. Thank you, everybody who joined us. And we'll put the recording up to share with everybody. And uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you so much, Emily. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Just... Thanks so, so much.